We begin tonight with that famous millionaire under arrest in a cold case 30 years in the making after a major twist in the case playing out on national television. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at 10 times criminals accidentally confessed. Nancy had written something else. It was a blog post. The title? How to murder your husband. For this list, we'll be considering the most noteworthy instances where criminals mistakenly admitted to their crimes or accidentally gave prosecutors legal grounds that led to charges and convictions. What other accidental confessions have you heard of? Let your tongue slip in the comments below. David Youngerman. In Kansas City tonight, an arrest in the mysterious murder of personal injury attorney Tom Pickert. Kansas City, Missouri attorney Tom Pickert was fatally shot in front of his home on October 25th, 2017. Pickard had recently helped his client win a $5.75 million civil settlement against millionaire businessman David Youngerman. While Youngerman's van was spotted by witnesses at the scene, he denied any involvement in Pickard's murder. However, when police searched his house, they found some incriminating evidence, including a digital audio tape containing what appeared to be a confession. Apparently unaware that he was being recorded, Youngerman allegedly admitted to being responsible for Pickard's death. Saying in part, people uh, know that I murdered that son of an expletive. This recording helped prosecutors secure a conviction of first-degree murder and armed criminal action. As to count one, we the jury find the defendant, David Youngerman, guilty of murder in the first degree. William Corzon. Police surrounded the home at the end of this lane off Barcroft Road in Lower Windsor Township this morning, taking into custody a 76-year-old man. For nearly 40 years, the whereabouts of Gloria Corzon remained unknown. Gloria had been married to William Corzon since 1967 and suffered domestic violence for years. In 1981, she mysteriously disappeared. She was just 37 at the time. Her body was never found, but she was formally declared dead in 1997. Although her family believed that Corzon had a hand in Gloria's disappearance, there was simply no way of proving it. Until 2019, after police reopened the case, they reached out to Corzon, who immediately inquired if they'd found her body. The only problem was that police didn't even know there was a body to find. By all indications, Gloria was still presumed missing. As a result, Corzon was charged with criminal homicide. He eventually pleaded guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to seven and a half to 15 years in prison. Unfortunately, as, as lives have been lost along the way, victims like Gloria helped pave the way for abusers to be punished properly and saved countless other lives. Aaron Burrell. It could be a scene from a movie. Criminals calling the cops on themselves by accident. It's rather unusual for a 911 call to be made not by the victim of a crime, but by the perpetrator. That was the case for a burglary that occurred in New Mexico in September of 2014. One of the suspects in the case, Aaron Burrell, mistakenly butt-dialed 9-11 after making his getaway from the crime scene. For nearly 45 minutes, dispatchers listened in as Burrell and his accomplice, Yvonne Thyberg, gloated about their alleged actions and how they successfully made their getaway. I was like, all we gotta do is hit the highway, you know, hit on the other side of McGaffney and we're gone. Sure enough, we lost that mother. It didn't take long for police to trace the call down to Burrell, who was arrested alongside Thyberg on multiple criminal charges related to the burglary. Officer was sent to, uh, to the address that they mentioned to check on the house, found that it was indeed, had been burglarized. A third suspect, Marvin Myers, was also arrested but later released. Guy Saleo. When 31-year-old chef Jim Webb was found dead at his restaurant, police suspected his business partner, Guy Saleo. In the beginning of their business partnership, they got along well. However, the pressures of the financial responsibilities they had caused a lot of tension between the two of them. They, however, discovered that Saleo seemingly had an alibi for the night of the murder. Webb had been shot in the back of his head, but the manner of his death was withheld from the public. So it made police all the more suspicious when Saleo, while consoling Webb's wife, asked her who would want to shoot Jim. Upon further investigation, Saleo's alibi quickly fell through, and authorities found out that he and Webb had both taken out $650,000 life insurance policies on each other. Those policies had one purpose, which is that if one partner died, that the other one would be able to meet the debt load of the restaurant. In 2001, Saleo was charged with Webb's murder and received a life sentence upon conviction. When they read that verdict, it was the best thing I ever heard. Ivan Milat. The most feared predator in Australian criminal history. Regarded as one of the worst serial killers in Australia's history, Ivan Milat was responsible for the deaths of at least seven people between 1989 and 1992. During his trial in 1996, Milat was said to have exuded an air of confidence unusual for a criminal with a mountain of damning evidence against him. That confidence seems to have contributed to his downfall. While being questioned about a glove used to commit the crimes, Milat first responded with, I wore no, before realizing his mistake in stopping. From my point of view, it was an admission, and quite frankly, the way he said it and expressed it aggressively, it was a accurate admission. He then proceeded to deny ever seeing the glove. Prosecutors took advantage of Malat's slip-up and were eventually able to convince the jury that he was, in fact, the backpacker murderer.
And you're saying the happiest day of your life will be when your brother dies? I, I think his demise would be greatly appreciated by me, yeah. For the damage he's done, not to me, to all those people out there. Aryan Circle members. On July 1st, 2016, Clifton Hallmark, an Aryan Circle member, was shot and killed by one of his associates, Jeremy Jordan, at a pre-Independence Day party. Instead of reporting the crime, the group recruited Hallmark's wife and another woman to take his body to a local gas station and stage his death as the result of a robbery. But when the women called 911, they discussed the details of their intended cover-up while dispatchers listened. In addition, surveillance footage from the gas station showed that no robbery had taken place. That was all police needed to arrest Jordan on charges related to the murder. Seven other Circle members, including the two bumbling women, were charged with accessory after the fact. Merle Mackey Reality shows often get a bad rep for their exploitative and sometimes unpleasant nature. But in this case, one reality show helped crack a decades-old murder case. Back in 1981, Evelyn Laverne Mackey vanished from the Florida home she shared with her daughter and her husband, Merle Mackey. Hey, when is mom coming home? Have you heard from her? And Merle asked me, what would you say if I told you your mom wasn't coming home? The mystery behind her disappearance remained unsolved until 2015, when the reality show Cold Justice took investigators to interview Merle Mackey one more time. After being grilled for hours, Mackey initially claimed that Laverne's death was an accident. But when he began going into detail, he inadvertently revealed that the incident had been premeditated. It's colossal. It's an explosion in my brain that he's, he's talking. He's taking ownership to be in there at the time of her death something he's never done. Mackey eventually pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and received a 10-year prison sentence. I believe that Merle Mackey killed Laverne just for the money in a bank account. He could care less of, about her being a person, a human being. Anthony Garcia. Thought that it would be a great idea to tattoo a crime scene on his chest. While some fictional criminals get tattoos of prison blueprints to help them escape, some of their real-life counterparts, ink work, have landed them behind bars. In 2008, Anthony Garcia had his mugshot taken after he was arrested at a routine traffic stop. When police took a second look at the picture, they were struck by the distinctive tattoo across his chest. Turns out the elaborate design was actually a vivid recreation of a 2004 murder carried out by Garcia. He looked at this gentleman's tattoo and realized, oh my god, this is the crime scene from that liquor store slaying. Several details from the crime scene were depicted in the tattoo, including the liquor store where it occurred and the direction the victim's body fell. An undercover policeman was able to extract a further confession from Garcia, which led to his eventual conviction. Nancy Crampton Brophy. I think your case is held together with, real frankly, band-aids. Oh. If you plan to get away with killing your husband, it might help to not publish an essay and title it How to Murder Your Husband. The murderous wife in this case is Nancy Crampton Brophy, a writer whose husband, Daniel Brophy, was shot and killed at his workplace. Dan Brophy was dead at age 63. Somebody just wanted to execute this person. His wife's infamous essay had raised suspicions among the police who arrested and charged her three months later. While in jail, Crampton Brophy allegedly let it slip to one of her cellmates that she was close by when the shooting happened, before quickly correcting her mistake. The cellmate in question took the stand during her trial and testified against her. Because I said, wow, that must have been close up, you know, and she used her arm span and said, well, it was about this far. And in the end, Crampton Brophy was found guilty of second-degree murder and locked up for life. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Robert Durst in January 2022, real estate heir Robert Durst died in prison after being convicted of the murder of his longtime friend, Susan Berman. This is an interesting picture of you and Susan. Yes, I'd like to get a copy of this. Yeah. Durst had gained international recognition after his involvement in the HBO miniseries The Jinx. The critically acclaimed documentary revolved around Durst and the three murders he was suspected of carrying out. During the final episode, Durst was presented with damning handwriting evidence implicating him in Berman's murder. In a shocking turn, he walked into the bathroom and muttered what seemed to be a confession. What the hell did I do? Did I kill them all? Of course. Although it was later revealed that the clip was edited by the filmmakers, Durst was arrested and charged with the crime, in part due to the evidence presented in the series. Durst, under arrest in that orange jumpsuit, entering court, about to be extradited, charged with murder. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.